Hi everyone, I'm Dan Elliott and welcome to the DokiPen channel. So we now have objects receiving damage and reusing render targets correctly. But we've come up against the issue where if our objects have non-uniform UVs or have been scaled non-uniformly, then the damage applied is stretched. Obviously that's not what we want, so we need a way to detect how stretched they would be and unstretch the brush material when doing the drawing into the render target to counteract the scaling on non-uniform UVs. The basic approach is going to be this. When we sample the UVs at the point where we do a line trace, we can also ask for the UVs which are just a little bit offset from the hit position. If we do that in two directions, which are at right angles to each other in the world, then we can take the difference with the original hit UV and find out if they're longer or shorter than each other, and hence if the UVs are non-uniform. We need to have two more of these fine collision UV nodes and feed them two hit results, which represent the hit position, but just a little bit offset in the two directions. So to create these offset hit results, we can use a node called make hit result. And we'll actually just copy and paste one to make it two. All they need to create a valid hit result is to tell them what component they represent, which we can get from the existing break result. And the face index, which is an integer which indicates which polygon was hit. And that needs to go into both as well. We'll be setting the location of the hit manually in a second, but first let's create those find collision UV nodes to get that out of the way. I'll just copy that and connect it up below. Now for the location, this is going to be a bit tricky, as we know that we need to offset the original location, but we haven't decided what those vectors are yet. Let's drag the destination location pin out and create an add vector node and connect up the original location. And that second input is going to be the offset that we add to that position. So for the offset, we want it to be so that the offset position is moved away slightly from the hit position, but remains as close to the surface of the mesh as possible. We can use the property of the cross product operation that the resulting 3D vector of a cross product between two other 3D vectors will be at a right angle to the two input vectors. Another way of saying that a vector is pointing in a direction that is a right angle to another is to say that the two vectors are orthogonal to each other. And this is really useful to us because we have the normal vector of the mesh at the position that was hit, and that's given to us by the hit result. And if we do a cross product with any random vector, we're almost guaranteed that the vector will be tangent to the surface, which means that it's a vector that lies flat on the surface and is 90 degrees from the mesh normal and points away from the original hit location. And that sounds like it'll do just what we want. So to do this, let's create a random unit vector which is a vector of length one that points in a random direction. And from that, we'll do a cross product with the random as one input. And for the other input, we'll get the normal vector from the hit result and plug it in as the second input. Technically, the result from this should be normalized, but just to be on the safe side, when performance isn't a concern, then I'm just gonna manually normalize it just to make its length one. And from there, I'm gonna multiply the vector by a value of 25 which will make the vector now 25 units long, which in the game world should be 25 centimeters. So let's add it to the source location to make our final position that, that we're gonna be sampling the UVs from. One cool thing we can do is actually draw this vector in the game world to see if it's doing what we want. I'll create a draw debug arrow, and we can set the end of the arrow drawn to be where our offset sample position is, and the beginning of the arrow to be the hit location. Let's take the execution from the line trace and hook it into the debug arrow node to then feed the execution through to the rest of our logic. Let's make the arrow size say 10 and its color red. And we'll make it last two seconds with a thickness of 1.5 units. That doesn't look quite right. So let's see what's going on there. And it's just that we plugged in the offset vector itself and not the hit location plus the offset, which is our final sample location. And that's what we're after. 
it's a fixed offset along the surface 25 units away from the hit point, and that is what we'll use to feed into the make hit result node and then sample the UVs at that point to measure the difference. I'll wrap this in a comment block and call it double cross. And I've called it double cross, kind of as a play on words, because to find the next offset vector, we're going to be doing another cross product. If we take the newly created vector, which we know lies tangent on the surface, and do another cross product, this time with the mesh normal, we'll get another vector that lies 90 degrees to both of them, and still lies tangent on the surface. This will become our next offset vector. We will copy the float multiplication node to scale the vector's length by 25, and then add the offset to the second add node. Now again, to verify that the second offset vector is orthogonal to the first, we can draw that second vector too. Just copy the existing node, move the execution pin over to the last one, connect the two together, and plug in the start position from the hit location, and lastly, the second offsetted position. Let's hit play and see what we get. Well, there are two vectors, but they don't look orthogonal, as they should be pointing 90 degrees away from each other. One thing we could try is to normalize the result of the second cross product. Sometimes weird things can happen if you've got vectors that aren't normalized, but I happen to know that isn't the issue. There's another video in this course whose topic is about random numbers and how they can be seeded to get predictable results. And what's happening here is that the random unit vector node provides a brand new random number each time it's used. The fix is to remove this random vector generator and use the random unit vector from stream node. This does the same thing, but provides a way to consistently produce predictable random numbers using streams, which are a way to seed the generator. The output goes into where we had the previous random vector, and the input we can drag out to make a random stream. And here you can find the initial seed value, which will make the random value be the same if the seed is the same. Now, when we go into the game, we can see that we get nice orthogonal vectors, which are working on all surfaces. So in the next video, we'll use these offsetted positions to sample the offset UVs and calculate how much stretch we need to compensate for in the brush material. So thanks for watching and see you then.